Hey, welcome to Radiation Safety. Uh, I'm Carolyn Reno, and I'm going to tell you how to stay safe when taking an x-ray. You're permitted to receive no more than five REMS of radiation doses a year. We want you to only get one REM a year. Now, it's measured in millireMS, and so when we, when we get a, a reading, um, a dosimeter reading, um, from your dosimeter badge, which we provide for you when you're in our program, uh, we will let you know if um, because if you have an occupational exposure of one rem per year, it's going to decrease your life expectancy by about a month. Um, so we're trying to help you stay as safe as possible. To put it in perspective, um, if you smoke um, and you're smoking 20 cigarettes a day, uh, that will decrease your life expectancy by six and a half years. If you're overweight by 15%, that will decrease your life expectancy by 2.7 years. So in the scheme of things, occupational exposure to x-rays is not high. Uh, it's not, not very dangerous, but we want to reduce that as much as possible. Because each time you're, you have an x-ray generated, you're exposed to a certain amount, number of millirems. And we want to decrease that, and we can decrease that by decreasing the number of x-rays that the machine is using. All right, so we, in order to understand how to decrease it as much as possible, you need to understand um, what, what x-rays are and what they go through. So if you think of UV radiation, okay, and there's alpha rays and beta rays, right? So alpha rays and there's UVA, UVB, right? You've heard of those. Well, UVA is um, not as dangerous as UVB. UVA will penetrate your skin a little bit, okay? Um, UVB will penetrate your skin and through your body to the other side and penetrate through part uh, some of some aluminum as well. So it's it's a little bit um, uh, more forceful. Gamma or X rays are um, a little are even more forceful than UVB rays, uh, and they can go through your body through aluminum and um, through partially through lead. And so we do have to be careful. And the farther away you are from these things, um, the more uh, protected you are. Um, neutrons are very dangerous, and they will go through your body, aluminum, lead, and partially through concrete. So this is kind of in relationship, where do x-rays fall? So in order to protect you, we want you to wear a lead apron, a lead thyroid shield, lead gloves, if you're exposed, um, exposing uh, a pet to x-rays or restraining the pet. You want to stand six feet or more from the beam if not protected and or around a corner or behind a lead partition. The further away you are from the x-ray machine, the more protected you are. The other thing we can do to reduce the amount of x-rays that come through this machine and onto this pet, this is protective uh, uh, against x-rays okay so this whole metal box here keeps the x-rays from just exploding everywhere in the room um, the x-rays are generated by ro this rotating uh, tungsten device and we'll talk about how the x-rays are generated they go through um, this little window and uh, and then are allowed through um, with this collimator um, diaphragm uh, they're allowed through this box uh, to hit the pet now, the wider this, this light is, there's also a light up here, so you can see, because you can't see x-rays, we use a light to indicate how big that box is that the x-rays can come through. So that wherever that light touches is where x-rays are penetrating through and, and getting a direct hit. Um, x-rays will, will uh, penetrate through quite a bit on a direct hit, but they will also affect you with scatter radiation. And scatter radiation is when it hits anything, any surface, this cat or this table, um, and it bounces off in, in every direction. So it scatters, and you can also be affected by those x-rays as well. So as much as possible, we want to set the pet up, set yourself up for um, success, and do one or two x 
x-rays. Expose two times on each pet, two or three times as necessary, but one view should get one x-ray. So if you can sedate the pet, like this cat is, to keep them still, that's helpful. If you can get it right the first time, that's helpful. Okay, so this person is adjusting the settings and collimating the machine. She's got all her lead protection on. This pet is sedated. She's doing it alone, so there's not an additional person exposed. This is all appropriate. So who can take x-rays and who can restrain the pet? Only an RVT DVM or a student under the direct supervision of an RVT or DVM can take an x-ray. Any person involved with the development of x-rays, that means people restraining, must have and wear a dosimeter badge. So you should not be restraining an animal without a dosimeter badge. We have in the past leased our equipment to the Animal Resource Center in Montgomery County. Uh, in that case, um, there were very few people who were actually allowed to use the x-ray machine and it was only for the purpose of educating our students. Um, we do not have that agreement anymore, but I leave that in there to let you know that we're very strict about who can use the x-ray because we want to protect as much as possible. No one under the age of 18 is permitted to restrain pets. If you are or might be pregnant, it is your responsibility to indicate that you are unable to assist in an x-ray. You don't have to tell us why, but you have to let us know that you're not allowed to assist. Only people who have attended a radiation safety course are permitted to restrain a pet. Um, so that's this course right now, and as long as you pass the, the exam, then you will be permitted to restrain a pet under um, the supervision of an RVT or DVM. No, this is really important. No part of the body, even a gloved hand, should be placed in the area of the x-ray beam. That's your body, not the pet's body, but your body. This is a really big no-no. Um, even though this has a lead protection, um, a direct um, x-ray beam, as you can see here, this animal is, is uh, getting a complete x-ray. Um, so the x-rays are going completely through the bone and through the tissue. It actually can, because this is a direct hit, go through the lead um, protection of this glove. So this person is not protected. Now the other thing that I have seen is that some people will uh, grab the, the animal's leg and put a, a um, glove over top of it. This is also not appropriate because what can happen is that this is all scatter radiation here. Everything, we've got radiation bouncing here and it's getting underneath this glove and bouncing up uh, into the hand. So we're getting double radiation. It's concentrated radiation under the glove. So that's also inappropriate. Most appropriate way to do this is to sedate the pet if possible Tie the uh, tie a little gauze uh, string to the to the pet's ankle and pull it um, so that your hand is out of the shot. So if you can do that, that is the way to do it. Uh, we service and calibrate the X-ray machine every three years to make sure that it functions normally. If the radiation machine is functioning normally and is calibrated, and we know that it is functioning normally, uh, then you are safer. The aprons, thyroid shields, and gloves uh, need to be stored without folding or to reduce creasing and fracturing. So if you think about metal, the more you bend it, the more likely it is to break. So we don't want to, that to happen within the lead lining because we won't be able to see it from looking at the outside of the apron. We have that checked by our radiology department at Sinclair and they ensure us uh, that the lead linings are still intact. Last time that was checked was 2019. X-ray procedure. So uh, we should have a standard operating procedure or protocol every time we take an x-ray. So you're going to look at the pet and determine that's the pet we're going to x-ray. You're going to put that pet pet's name, go drop down here to log it in. So you're going to put that pet's name, what, what part of the body you're going to be exposing, um, how you're going to expose that. So exposing the technique, looking at the KVP and MAS, and we will talk about what that means, but that's adjusting the settings of the x-ray machine. So you're getting just enough x-rays to get the view that you want. Um, and then you also need to put which operators um, are doing the x-ray in your radiology log. That's uh, required by the Ohio Department of Health. 
Um, so all of that information is going to go into the log. It's going to go into the computer. You're going to put your protective equipment on. You're going to put your dosimeter badge on and put that above the waist. You're adjusting your KVP and MAS. Uh, if you're using a computerized system, it's going to tell you what settings to put in, but you're going to need to use your knowledge to uh, adjust those settings based on the, the pet. So you when you put this in information, you start to put this information into the computer, you give the computer a basic idea as to the size of the pet, and then you're going to have to adjust based on the age of the pet or the body condition score of the pet um, so that you get a, a proper picture. Then you're going to position the pet make sure you have everything in the screen uh, and everything um, uh, straight uh, so that you're getting a good picture. You're going to collimate that beam to the narrowest setting. Collimation, 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 really important. The next thing, once you have everything set up, you're going to indicate to others that you're about to expose an x-ray. This is really important because this is a busy clinic often and people are going to be walking through the room or by the room or, uh, you know, may open the shooting um, and you're then you're going to depress the button typically it's a, a partial depression and that will get the cylinder to start spinning and then you press it down all the way to expose the film okay and again everything needs to be logged so that's the procedure get ready for this procedure prepare for the procedure tell people you're going to do the procedure do the procedure and make sure everything is logged in it is important for us that you always stay safe. So please use all of these protocols uh, when you are taking x-rays, um, particularly in this program, but continue to practice these safety measures for the rest of your uh, professional career. If you have any questions about your personal clinic or, where you, or any concerns about safety, please contact me at carolyn.reno at sinclair.edu.